I'm Kira Teeter, and I'm the Lunder Fellow in Paintings Conservation at the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Art conservators help to address damages or try and prevent them in cultural heritage objects such as paintings. And we do that in order to try and preserve the work in the long term. To become a conservator, you need to have a varied background in a variety of fields from science to art history and studio art. The process to get there is a long one and not everyone takes the same path. My first exposure to conservation was actually quite young. I was in high school and at the time I was visiting a historic home and one of the rooms was closed off for restoration. When I was in college, that moment came up to the forefront and it changed the course of my professional career. I was studying biology and the studio arts until I found out what I needed to apply to a graduate program in conservation. I spent a number of years doing internships until I applied and was accepted into a graduate program where I earned my master's of science. An art conservator needs to have a background in science, particularly chemistry, because any time that we're going to do interventive work on a painting, we need to understand the chemical makeup of the original artwork, as well as anything that's not original that's present. I was brought on as a paintings fellow to work on the Fighters for Freedom project in the fall of 2019. The Fighters for Freedom series is a collection of paintings by the artist William H. Johnson that depicts black history from the American Revolution up to the Second World War. As a collection, this series has not been shown since Johnson was alive. Johnson's Fighters for Freedom series was painted over 75 years ago, but his message remains relevant today. When I first encountered the Fighters for Freedom paintings, I did a condition survey. Even though there were similarities across the series of 29 paintings, each piece needed to be assessed and treated on the individual level. I was also working with some scientists at the Museum Conservation Institute on analysis of these paintings, which helps inform the treatment avenues that would be open to us. This work is a very collaborative process. The conservation took about two years. When approaching a treatment, you always need to take into consideration what materials the artist originally used. And when you are considering what materials you're going to use during the interventive treatment, you need to make sure they're very different from the original so that in the future, there is a way to distinguish the two. The other thing we want to take into consideration is reversibility. We want to use something that we can easily remove without causing any detrimental effects to the artwork itself. For this series of work, Johnson primarily painted on paperboard and he didn't add what we call a priming layer. So when he applied his paint, that oil was just very quickly absorbed into the board. And as a result, a lot of these paintings were appearing chalky or powdery because they were what we call underbound. And that was a challenge that we needed to address during treatment because we didn't want the paint to be flaking or powdering off during the exhibition. We reintroduced a binding agent to help hold that paint layer together. We wanted to make sure we were using something that wasn't going to create a glossy surface where he had intentionally wanted a matte paint layer. As a conservator, I obviously visually look at the paintings and see a difference because you're not seeing any of the damages anymore. But for me, I also have learned so much about each of the individuals that Johnson's depicting, but I'm also just inspired by these amazing people and their stories.